Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. Um, it's a great day. The weather is nice and beautiful today. Raise up the garage door, you know, uh, and just really decide to get at it. And But I wanted to do this video today for you guys because this is something that has been nagging me for months now. And I really just got a, I really just got the time to decide to do what... Um, to actually put down what I wanted to show you guys. Now, the question, not, not the question, but the situation has been, there are a lot of new crafters out there that's probably watching these videos that don't have a lot of tools and they can't do um, a lot of the big time projects that are some of the more uh, advanced or intermediate crafters are doing. So what this video here is just having fun with leather work doing leather crafting and coming up with some very inexpensive products to to as far as material wise and you guys know my motto minimize your profits on the front end to maximize your profits on the back end so what i decided to do i decided to come up with a few projects i'm just going to give you guys three three projects to work on to where you can make a lot of money just simply by doing these three projects. And you don't have to spend a lot of money on material. You can uh, basically go and buy a single shoulder, uh, 1.5 to 2 ounce or 2 to 3 ounce. And uh, that's all you need because the projects are small, but these projects are in high demand in the leather crafting world. And you don't need a lot of tools to do these. Basically, the biggest part of the things that you guys will need is the chisel punches. You definitely need to invest in you some chisel punches. You guys have seen other videos that I've done to where I have three different size chisel punches. And that's just basically to do the stitching, the saddle stitching in these projects. Uh, you would also need a good mallet, which uh, if you have access to anybody who has polyurethane, I made my own mallet, a nice little, um, probably a half pound mallet that's just made out of polyurethane, just cut off the ends and I keep that stuff by. Um, if, if you get a look around a, a chicken house or a chicken plant processing plant, you can get those as well as your cutting boards. You can get all of that. So again, now I, this video don't want to don't want to make, make it a long video, but um, because I pre done a lot of the work and I actually wanted you guys to see the doing the work process of this, but I went ahead and did a lot of the tooling to get it knocked out the way so you guys can see this. So let me get situated and set up and then I'll be right back to show you guys what we're going to do. Uh, it's just three little simple projects. We're going to do some minimalist wallets that have changed in style a little bit. They have changed in style a little bit. So uh, if you guys are not current up on the minimalist wallets or the front pocket wallets, this is going to be a great project to do. Uh, we're also going to go back to our tried, proven, and tested product the leather cuff uh, i might even show you guys again uh some different stuff too uh, well not again but i will show you guys about making some custom watch bands that are popular right now as well as doing the bib the leather bibs for regular trucker hats the trucker hats are really popular right now so uh, i'm just going to show you guys some different bibs and things like that so let me pause and get set up and then we'll be right back to go off into what, what, what I want to show you guys about maximizing your profits on the back end with small projects that all you need to do is a minimal investment of just buying a single shoulder. And then this will knock things out the park and put you all the way in the game to where you guys can start making and generate some money and then start, it, start to invest in more tools, more projects, and get off into more money. So see you guys in a few seconds. Okay, and we're back. So, here we go uh, with the three projects that I promised you guys that I want, to start, I want you guys to start trying to do. And that is the Trucker's Bib, Bill. And this is, based, this is how, um, I've already did the tooling work and already did the carbon work. Now, you guys don't necessarily have to do that, but utilize the tools that you have. 
in order to get these out. These are in high demand right now. Now, to make it simple, my simple pattern was an old hat that I had already. And you guys can see those stitching marks right there where the hat was dirty, dingy, lost its body, didn't wouldn't hold a shape. So basically, uh, what I done, I took it apart and just used the bib as uh, my pattern. Now, and that's all that you have to do. Now, I buy these hats uh, in bulk, and you guys can go online and <coughs> excuse me. Oh, uh, got somebody's out there cutting grass. Golly. But um, you guys can go online and find these, and you can get them for as low as $3 a piece. Just regular plain truckers hat. Doesn't have to be anything fancy snazzy. I know some people like the little snapbacks, but these are all the Velcro backs because this part of the hat is not the focal point. Boys and girls, is not the focal point. Now, uh, of course, with these, I've had my logo uh, stitched into these. Um, so, and that's just brand building. And I usually do these hats. I give these hats away to clients of mine who spend over $150 so they get a free hat. But you guys don't have to do that. Or what you can do is go ahead, get your logo or your brand stitched into that, and then come back and do the leather work, and then you guys have free advertisement. You can see that, how it's gonna come together once we get it all cut out. Now you got free advertisement from somebody wearing the hat, as well as you featuring your stamping and your carving work. This is gonna oil out to be real beautiful um, to, to go with. Now, you can get away with these, um, I, even though the hat is black and white, what I'm gonna do is just regularly oil this with Neat's Foot Oil. I'm just gonna give it some good, good uh, even coats of oil on here. And then I'm gonna come back and stitch this with the black thread into the bibs. So uh, that everything will all be uniform. And then I might even just go ahead and dye the background black so it'll all pull together. But the majority of the work is just going to stay is just going to stay that natural color. So one project, small, single shoulder hide, and you can cut out a lot of these. So if you guys, if, if you guys have um, uh, go and just buy twelve of these hats, I know I think you can get these at Walmart too for like four or five bucks. So if you want to just go ahead and spend you a nice little twenty, thirty dollars, get you six hats, um, different colors. Go ahead and carve and tool your bill out. You don't. Now that is one stamp, the basket weave stamp. Now this is carving work here. Uh, I use the veiner into the leaf, and then I use a pear shader into the petals of the flower, and this is a camouflage tool. So one, two, three, four. Four tools is all it took, and I carved it out with my swivel knife. Simple, simple pattern, and don't need a lot of tools to do this and you can make a lot of money these hats right now if you can go on the etsy or uh you can look on pinterest and probably click on to one of those uh pages and you can find that crafters are selling these custom leather hats upwards upwards from 55 to 85 dollars so you can you can definitely maximize your profits and you only use four tools into this. That's one project there. Now, the next project is the leather cuff. Now, this is a fun little project to do. I love doing leather cuffs. Leather cuffs was one of my uh, first that I started doing. Uh, and this is just one stamp. And I really don't know what the technical name for this stamp is, but I will give you guys the numbers on here so if you um now you can also use let me interject this real quick you can also just use a basket weave stamp on this you don't have to have to necessarily have to buy this stamp you can use a basket weave stamp but the thing that i want to really focus on let me give you guys these numbers real quick on this tool that i used it is f926 d as in david david so frank 926 David David 
F926DD. So that's that tool there if you want to use this tool that I use in here. But you guys can just regularly go with a regular basket weave stamp. But look at this right here. This is what I really want to show you guys. This is the money maker and this is why this project is in high demand right now. You can go to Wally World and buy you a box of these flat stones. They're all different colors. Man, this is a leather crafter's dream here because you can't get any more perfect than a flat stone which is gonna sit very nicely in an inlaid cuff. Very nicely to do that. And they come in different colors, very beautiful, and you can, you can dye these, and uh, you even get creative and use the wax thread to match the colors in your stones. Glass stones, you can find these over in the craft department. Uh, man, they come in a lot of different colors, beautiful. Um, you can go in the craft department of Walmart, right over there where they have the vases, the flowers, and all of that stuff for, for other crafters who are putting uh, vases and flowers together. But these are the same stones that are in the bottom of those vases. Flat, very perfect. And the only thing that I've done with this one, uh, and I wish I had a not um, went ahead and tooled this, but I can tell you guys it's very simple. Once you get, once you get the, um, the, the sizing of your cuff, all you do is lay this stone on top of your leather and trace it out. So that way you'll know what size to use or what size you want to cut your hole out. Now, the thing the different with that is I come back with my wing divider, $1.99 at Harbor Freight. Come back with my wing divider. And I use that on the outside of my tracing line, the, the outside of the stone, and I trace that inner circle, and that's the part that I cut out. I cut out that inner part. Once I use the outside part of that stone, and I trace the inside line out, cut that out, and then I came back with my burnishing, um, uh, not a burnishing wheel, but uh, whatever you want to call this is perfect for getting inside of that hole there. And then um, after I took my water, moistened it a little bit, I just come back and burnish that edge all the way around. This cone fits perfectly in a drill. I, I guess you guys can see that where it's been inside my drill. And it just burnishes it real well. Once you get that far, then you just take the back side of your leather cuff, take the back side of that cuff, and then you're gonna put this stone right in the center of that hole. And while it's still a little damp from casing, I'm just gonna push, and let me, let me angle this camera down so you guys can see what's happening here. I'm gonna push the outsides of this leather all the way down around that stone. Now, this raised part, if you guys can see that, how it's raised, this is going to hold your stone in place. This is what's going to hold your stone. Then, right when we get ready to put this together with the contact cement, I'm going to contact cement just one side of this because as I get ready to roll my cuff, uh, you guys seen another video about how contact cement and rubber cement works. So, I'm going to pull this tight to where all that excess, you see where it, where it already is having an overhang? Now once I pull that tight, then I'll go back and trim that rest of that extra off. And then that will help maintain that roundness of it. Now the back side of your leather, I know it's kind of hard to depict or hard to picture it because I'm still trying, it's not put together right. It's not put together yet. But once we get that shape to hold and go in like we need it to go, then I'm gonna come back and stitch it and finish that up. You guys hang on, I'll be right back. Um, and then I'll show you the last project that, that I want to show out to you and that's the minimalist front pocket wallets. Let me angle the camera back up. So uh, stay tuned, I'm gonna come right back with the minimalist front pocket wallets and show you the new changes that's going on on that. All right, and we're back with the final and last 
uh, project that I want to introduce you guys to, which is not something you need to inter be, it, uh, need something to be introduced to, but what it is, it is the new way that a lot of customers are requesting their front pocket minimalist wallets. Now, very inexpensive, very inexpensive, very easy to do, and the 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 material that you will need, again, you're sticking with that same 1.5 to 2 ounce veg tan leather. I love veg tan leather because I can tool it. I can tool it, I can carve it, and it is thick enough and thin enough to do what I need to do with. Now, the only thing that I will tell you that I'm interject this in real quick is to double tape, double masking tape the, the flesh side because you're working with such a thin leather you really don't want it to start warping and changing shape on you but the materials to do uh, you will need for this minimalist wallet is your own wallet just go in and grab you one of any of your cards this is one of my old insurance cards that I had left around and that made a pattern on a piece of poster paper perfect size now, the difference between the minimalist wallets from the first time and the this time is, you guys can see my first minimalist wallet here. Um, a lot of customers didn't want this money clip in there. They didn't want it in, and then they said that it resembled the same thing like a regular billfold. So it was nothing special about that other than the fact that you didn't have all those compartments and, and pockets in there. So, the minimalist wallets now are coming two-piece. You'll come with a front side, which you guys can see I've already marked my pattern on this one. This is the new, the new two-piece front pocket wallet, minimalist wallet. So you have a front side and a back side. Same shape, same size. And here's the thing. Get you and invest into the RFID paper. You can get this at Tandy. Um, you guys already know I'm a Tandy guy, so I buy my stuff at Tandy, but I'm pretty sure whatever um, leather craft supply store you're getting your stuff from, they will have this. Inexpensive. It's not very expensive, but it is very necessary to go into your front pocket wallets, and that paper, that RFID paper, is theft protection. And uh, it'll keep people from scanning and, uh, you know, these, I'm, I'm going to tell you folks, it, it's, it's funny and crazy to me that somebody spent that much time into uh, a machine that can scan all of your information off your car. Now, if you're that smart, man, you need to be working for NASA or somewhere or doing some type of cybersecurity. But hey, you can't stop crime. So what has come out now is the RFID paper you can get this again we're back at that same 1.5 to 2 ounce best tan leather and you're going to put that RFID paper in between your best tan leather and your um, either you can use pig lining goats uh, kid lining or whatever type of lining that you want to use on that. You don't necessarily have to have four pieces of veg tan to do to make these little projects. You just need the outside and the backside, and you can line the inside with either pig skin, pig lining, or goat uh, skin. So then you can also go to Walmart. We're back at Walmart again, where you can buy just regular elastic. You can get up to three yards of this stuff for like, I think, $2.47. So all in, you're out about 40 bucks. And that's with your single shoulder. Um, that's with your RFID paper and your uh, elastic. And the way this is going to work, when you get ready to start, when you get ready to put your backside lining onto your, um, into, on, onto that front side, you're going to, Contact cement, of course, and then you're going to stitch all the way around this to lock in your elastic. Now, the great part about this is it doesn't require a lot of elastic. So out of three yards of this stuff that you can buy at Walmart, man, you can probably make about 10 of these little uh, front pocket wallets. And you want to make that elastic 
fit to size. Don't give any slack. Don't put any extra in it. You want to make it to size. The average person that I know, even the, the ones that have more wealth than I do, um, still don't carry any more than five cards. So, um, I mean, and then if you're making enough money to where you got a black card, you really don't need but three. So you got a black card, American Express, a Visa, and a MasterCard. That's four cards plus your ID that gives you five cards. So five cards is all that you're going to carry. Then, even if you do have cash, this elastic is strong enough to where you can fold your paper money in, 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 a, in a quarter size width and slip it right down the backside of that elastic and in a hole. So you don't want to cut any extra. But now here's a kicker. Whoever, whatever customer decides to order these front pocket wallets from you, um, you can ask them how many cars do they generally carry. So they'll fill you in and then basically what all that I've done, I got a whole bunch of other little scrap cars, library cars, some Logan's preserve cars, just enough to get that thickness that I'm looking for. And I put all of that together and then I go back and I cut my elastic to fit that. So, and you can use any type of card stock. So Make sure when your clients or your, your customers or your clients are ordering these, just ask them how many cars do they generally carry. Now, here's the other thing. A lot of people think that this is not safe because the cars might can fall out the bottom. But this elastic is so tight. It is so tight. It doesn't give the cars any room for slippage. And that's the great part about it. And also, it's going in your front pocket, not your back pocket. And the great part about the vest tan is uh, you can tool or carve any type of little design on the front, whatever the person may have. It's big enough for um, um, if you guys have the regular stamps, alphabet stamps, you can stamp the initials in there and then just do some basic tooling. Um, I, I wish that I had one of these up and ready for you guys to see. Um, but I don't because I was working on the bibs and the, the cuffs. But that's three quick projects that you guys can do to minimize spending to maximize your profits. So, and they're small projects, single shoulder. You can get some single shoulder from Tandy. I know sometimes they're running on sale for like $19.99 if you go online and buy it. Or, or if you got a chance to go to your local tandy store, then you can go down there and pick you out a nice little hide. They're all, um, they vary in size anywhere from nine square feet up to 13 square feet. But look at what you're getting out of that. You know how many of these little minimalist wallets you can cut out of nine square feet? Man, you can get a lot. Now, these little jewels right here, are retailing anywhere um, from 25 to 50 bucks, depending on the work, depending on your craftsmanship, and depending on um, uh, your clientele or your customer base. Me myself, I, I don't get in. I don't sit down at my table for under 50 dollars an hour. So if I'm doing these, it's 55, 54.99 is what I generally charge, but you guys can get anywhere from 25 to 50 bucks depending on your craftsmanship level. But understand, out of a single shoulder, you ought to be able to quintuple, if not sextuple, your money out of a, um, you will run out of the elastic before you run out of your car, your front pocket wallets. You'll run out of the elastic. So you'll probably have to be going back and forth to Wallet World buying more elastic. And if, if you got a, 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 a 285, uh, the, these spools of wax thread, you guys know that I buy these off of Wish. And you can get 284 yards of this stuff. And I've been really using it from 284 yards. You got 284 yards of this, and you can get these on the Wish app for a dollar a piece. Wax thread. And it'll last you forever. Now, those are three projects, boys and girls, that you guys can work on and that you can craft. And if you don't have a lot of tools, they're perfect and they're great for that until you can build your bank up 
to start buying more tools and then move on to bigger projects. But don't sleep on the small projects. And like I said, you got, it's over, it's well over 50 stones in this. And uh, again, with the, this is a two by eight, two inches wide, eight inches long cuff. And all I did was incorporated that flat stone into it with some small tooling work and just going to stain this. Well, not even going to stain it. I'm just going to oil it. And the oil, the neat foot oil is going to take, give it a little bit of color to it, a little bit of contrast, because that's not the focal point. The stone is the focal point. Look at that. And then I'm going to come right back with some blue wax thread to make it all pull together. And this cuff right here is going to sell for about $55 to $65. So simple, simple projects that you guys can do over and over and over and over again and maximize your money and your profits. Hey, this is the Leather Cowboy right here from Mid Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. I'm going to sign off right now because we're already at the 26 minute mark. But you guys, don't forget to hit the subscription button and hit the little bell. Every time I do these videos, it'll show up one uh, in your news feed. And you guys can always come and drop comments. Let me know what you're doing. Uh, also, drop me pictures if you guys decide to do these little projects. Drop your pictures and let me see what you're working with. You can also hit me up on Google. You can also hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all up under the same name, Premier Leather Crafters. Hey, I'm gonna sign off, get out of here, and get back to work. See you guys on the other side.